Hello, I am Shunichi Nakamura, Vice President of IABSC. I was engaged in design and construction of bridges in Japan. This is the Akashi Kaikyo Bridge, the world's longest suspension bridge. I was in charge of fabrication and construction of the cables. This is a fairly long footbridge which suffered the lateral vibration induced by pedestrians. I clarified its mechanism and suppressed the vibration. After the Akashi, I moved to the Toka University and I teach and study bridge engineering until now. I'm going to talk about cable corrosion triggers collapse of cable supported bridges. I start my talk with this video. This is the Tide Arch Bridge in Taiwan. When a big lorry moved, hanger ropes broke, then the bridge collapsed. This kind of failure would occur on any old cable supported bridge. This is a beautiful bridge. The structural form is unique. The arch rib is single in the span center and branches into two arch ribs near the supports. But it collapsed, miserable results. It was found after the bridge collapsed, the hangar ropes were corroded. Lots of bridges suffer cable corrosion. These are examples of broken wires of the main cables and the stays. Don't ask me where I got these photos. I have studied cable corrosion more than 30 years. I'll show you one of my studies of galvanized steel wires. This is a new and healthy wire. We made corroded wires on the three levels. This is corrosion level one. The wire is covered with white zinc corrosion. This is corrosion level two. Brown ferrous rust occurs locally. This is corrosion level three. Corrosion further progresses and ferrous rust spreads widely and deeply. We carried out tension tests. This shows the actual tensile strength, which is obtained by dividing the applied tension by the actual cross-sectional area, considering the depleted area due to corrosion. The x-axis is the mass loss due to corrosion, which corresponds to the corrosion level. Just look at galvanized one. Bare steel means non-galvanized wires. You can understand that the actual tensile strength does not change. This shows the elongation. Clearly, elongation decreases with corrosion. Corroded wire loses ductility. We carried out cyclic tests with wires on different corrosion levels. This is the SN curve. Y axis is the stress amplitude and X axis is the number of cycles until breakage. If you look at this graph carefully, you can understand fatigue strength lowers with corrosion. This is the proposed design SN curve for new and corrosion level one wires. SN curve for corrosion level two wires. SN curve for corrosion level three wires. We also carried out cyclic tests under wet conditions. 
a wire is wrapped with wet gauze inserted into the silicon tube, sealed with vinyl tape and tested. Here are the results under dry and wet conditions. Obviously, fatigue strength lowers under wet conditions. This is bad news because in most cases, cables are in the wet environment when they corrode. I show you the broken parts of the corrosion level 3 wire. Naturally, the wire was broken at the most severely corroded part. I want to know whether the hanger rope could break when a heavy lorry moves on the bridge, which happened in Taiwan. Dr. Miyachi Gifu University and I carried out nonlinear analysis to get the stress amplitude. This is a bridge model with a span length of 140 meters. This is the box gather section, the arch rib, and the hangar. We designed this bridge by specifications and practice in Japan, not the exact dimensions of the bridge in Taiwan, which is not available. This is the FEM model. And we got the stress amplitude of the center hanger, which is about 28 megapascal. Although this stress amplitude seems small, it is amplified due to the following factors. Moving vehicles induce dynamic effects. The amplification coefficient alpha would be 1.34. Secondary bending stress occurs at the sockets due to local deformation. The safety factor of hangers is assumed 2.5 in our study. When it is lower than this, it amplifies the stress amplitude. Hanger tensions would be different from the design values because of uh, poor quality control at construction or the aging effect. There is the effect of other vehicles on the same and the opposite lanes. All of these factors would amplify the stress amplitude due to single lorry load. It could be 93 to 139 megapascal according to my estimate. It is known that the fatigue strength of strand is lower than that of wires because of friction between wires, stress concentration at the socket, and so on. The reduction rate would be uh, 0.57 according to the Japanese codes. So the SN curve for level 3 corrosion wire is converted to this equation for the strand considering the reduction rate. Then you can get the number of cycles until breakage of a strand for a given stress amplitude. Suppose the bridge is in service for 20 years, number of vehicles can be obtained. If a bridge has busy traffic, 82 vehicles per day is likely to occur. So, the hangar rope could break. I want to remind you that the deterioration or structural defects of the strand anchoring 
increase the risk of hangar breakage. Here is another topic related to this tide arch bridge. You might think, is there any weakness on this unique structure form with branched arch ribs? So, Miyachi and I carried out nonlinear analysis 